everybody, it's Tyler here at the University of North Dakota Signature event here at Mall of America. Check in with your prior division winners. They're in Dome. Well, they've been on Dome three times already, right? Absolutely incredible. It is BarkBots getting there. We're so happy to be with them once again. They have another phenomenal robot we'll be talking about this year. You got to take a look at their uh, basket that they're doing with their agitator, the custom uh, amount that's gone into this. We'll be talking more about a lot of great aspects of this robot here. We'll be getting just a general overview of this robot, especially early on during the pushback season. So cool to see what iterations teams have come up with and where the meta is going as well too. BarkBot's having a great event so far, so we can't wait to learn more about them here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash vex. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Drone Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Alex, let's start to break down this robot here. Start me out with the uh, intake on your machine. Right. So this intake is pretty simple. Um, we kind of first our first stage is flex wheels right here. We did we decided not to use rubber bands because we saw that rubber bands are like entangling a lot. We don't want to like get entangled in matches, right? And we actually split this intake up into three different motors. So we have one 11 watt motor over here, a 5.5 watt motor on the back stage, and another 5.5 watt on the top stage. And this allows us to kind of like really customize how we use our intake. So, um, if, all right, you can feed some blocks here. So, to f we, our first kind of customization is that we can first feed these blocks into the basket over here. So, right there. And whenever you hold down this button, um, all the blocks in the basket are, all the blocks are gonna go into the basket. And then from the basket, we kind of have two different options, or three actually different options. We can either outtake from the front, the middle, or the bottom. You know, there's like three different goal heights. So the top is going to be like that. Ryan's going to get those balls back into the basket. And for the middle one, it's a bit like iffy since a lot of these mechanisms are in the way. So we have to deploy this whenever you want to score in the middle goal. And it goes like that. And then the bottom goal is just a pretty simple outtake. Like this. So we kind of have a lot of customization with this kind of intake. And um, yeah, it works great. So. I love that you're bringing the best of all worlds, right? With this, we've seen many different robots. You're kind of bringing all those robots together. By adding that extra complexity, though, are, are there any potential issues with like balls jamming or anything like that, or any things you've had to try to mitigate with having kind of three separate systems with that? Um, we've had a few times the balls have jammed, but we implemented these actual this actual funnel system where we have standoffs over here and here, and these kind of make sure that the balls are always in the center so they don't get like jammed off into the side. And if anything, I feel like the system's a bit less complex since um, you don't have to chain or like gear the whole intake together. Sure. There's a lot less chaining, there's a lot less gearing, so I think the works well. Yeah, fair enough on that. Orion, let's talk more about the uh, match load uh, mechanism you had. And of course, we saw that aligner just a little bit ago. Uh, break down more of what goes into it. Yeah, so for our match load mechanism, we realized that we needed something very strong and sturdy because like what you're gonna be ramming into the match load, like bar like a lot in the match so if you could deploy it you see we actually have a high strength axle here and we used to have a standoff here but we realized that that's super weak and it kept bending inwards so we replaced it to a high strength axle and we use this little uh, curved Delrin piece here and this lip gets under the balls and then this ramp kind of funnels them into our intake we did this little cutout here so the balls get funneled into the intake instead of going to the sides and one cool thing about this is it actually works with like very like a lot of margin. Even if we're like two inches off from the mash loader, we're still able to get the balls from it because these little slits here kind of auto align it to the mash loader. Uh, another thing about this is we have these two inch flex wheels here. And what this does is it makes it so even if our piston joint gets bent a little bit, the mash load mech is always a consistent distance off the ground. And then next I'll talk about the aligner here. So could you put it down? Uh, here we have a 
one piston aligner. It just uses a 50 millimeter piston here. And what this does is it allows us to kind of have more margin when scoring on the long goals. So this cutout shape is kind of cut out perfect to the shape in, on the long goals. And we want it to be really big so we have the most amount of margin. So to fit it in size, we put this piston on it. And also so we can score in the middle goal, we have to put it up. Uh, one cool thing about it is when we lift this up and keep this up at the same time, if you lift this, uh, what we can actually do is we have this standoff here. And what this does is extends a little bit out the front of our robot. So when we have, we have filled a goal with like our balls and we want to push our balls into, con into the control zone, we can back up and ram into all the balls and this standoff will actually push all of our colored balls into the control zone. So that's one thing that's helped us in a lot of our matches in getting that control zone on the long goal. So from a master strategy standpoint, is that something you're typically doing every match you're finding right now, or how does that kind of break down into your uh, match strategy overall? Yeah, so the biggest part of our match strategy is getting the control zones in the long goal because we realize that that's the bulk of the points. Sure. So using this does help us get those control zones. If we already have it, we don't need to use it, but if we see an opening to get the control zones with it, we will use it. You know I mean? Uh, this uh, basket you have is, first off, very aesthetically pleasing overall, but Thank you. it's been extremely functional. I know we've had a member of the GDC look at it as well, too, and was, they were very impressed with it, uh, as well. So talk to me more about the overall, uh, everything that's gone to it, and then the uh, agitator that's also in that I see in there, too. Yeah, of course. So we originally had mesh as our basket, uh, which whenever we had the mesh, it actually has a surprising amount of friction. So we noticed the blocks getting stuck in us not being able to get them into our robot. Our basket can hold about like 11 to 12 blocks. Um, we switched to satin mesh since it has less friction. It's made of like a similar type to basketball netting, so that way we can see through the mesh, so we can see what's inside our basket. And then the agitator in there is also to help break up the arches. If you could turn it on. Um, you could notice that when the agitator turned on, just the two things in here, uh, they spin, and that causes the blocks to not be able to get stuck and form uh, shapes that would cause it to not be able to intake. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really think about like how much you have to think into what terms of material you're going to use for that as well too, and that there'd be like different iterations for that. So I, I, I love that so far. Do you think uh, moving forward, like this is the material you're going to keep going with? I don't actually know because I've noticed a lot of teams are able to get control zones really easily because of the fact that their match loading system or match loading their basket like system holds them in a specific position where they don't get mixed up. Because sure. if we are red and we intake blue blocks, we'll get it mixed up with the red blocks so we can't outtake a specific amount and then spit out the rest. We could probably solve either a color store or switching the way we do this. But I am pretty happy with this. We also tested the Delrin funnel to make sure that's also really friction free. We have a prototype of the mesh here, which is kind of falling apart. But we did a lot of testing and this is what we found currently to be our best solution. Alex, let's wrap up and talk about odometry on your robot. Uh, what are you running with? Sure. Um, so the odometry is pretty like it's pretty interesting. It's a bit different from our last year design. We took a bit of inspiration from a Team Echo two six five four E with the leaf spring kind of design, and we have this two uh, two inch Omni wheels here, and then we have this kind of plastic piece that basically whenever the robot's on the ground, it gets bent up slightly like this, and the plastic is trying to pull it down. So that's how the wheels always contacting the ground. This kind of allows our autons to be really precise, especially this with this year's game. The goals, you don't really have that much like margin for error, like for scoring in them, and you need to be very precise. So this odom kind of really helps us do that. So you're actually like you're actually seeing less drift out of having something like that. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I love that overall. Barkbot's getting there. Uh, congratulations on all your performance from last year. We can't wait to see this year. You got a great season, I'm sure, coming up too, and can't wait to see hopefully a new dome uh, for you as well too with uh, uh, championships in St. Louis. So best of luck here at Mall. Can't wait to see your progress throughout the rest of the season. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu vex.